Boom. We are starting to record. It's a Monday in the year of the grace of 2020. We are all quarantined in different parts of the world, and this is a training in trauma tapping technique, among other things. Yeah. Yeah, because we, of course we want to share with you all what we have, and we have been gathering loud these last 13 years that we have been working with this. So, and whatever you have that you think that we should add into our training, into um, what we teach others, please let us know and just feel free to write in the in the chat um, to us personally or to everybody. So you just click the the little um, what you say arrow on the side to choose who you want to send it to. So we are super happy to to share with you, um, and we are doing this a bit more now during this uh, quarantine, and it's it's good. I mean, with this webinars, you can reach anybody anywhere actually as long as you have an internet connection good enough to yeah. to go soon and we're all gonna have an overdose of zoom one day yeah <laughs> not today this is the underdose and mm -hmm. so uh, cindy and jamie um and jamie we don't know why you're not on video maybe you don't want to and that's fine but please do let us know so that we know it's not a mistake jd there you are you got logged on yeah just, just while i'm driving hello ah, i'm just driving you. i'll be home in two minutes okay perfect no problem no problem thank you good yeah so we will probably have some more people joining because um but we will start the way we are now with the, we with the did, training we just started <laughs> yeah Oh. I'm, I'm Cindy and I'm driving also, so that's why I don't have the video going. <laughs> okay, no worries. All right, welcome everybody. It's time to get going. Gunilla, do you want to kick off? Yeah, I mean, so what we'd like to share with you is, of course, the, uh, one of the, um, what we call, one, somebody named it the hero technique um, that we are teaching, which is the TTT, and we call this a webinar on TTT, which is trauma tapping technique so um what about starting with the with our um, powerpoint so we go directly into that what do you say Ulf? yeah i think we should but i think we should just get the group together before we yeah do. yeah so we'll get the group together so we can do one of the things that we usually do which is a, a greeting that like so many other things we have learned from from um, groups that we have worked with because we love working with groups like your like you this group of people from all over the world and this specific i'm just going to mute somebody where it's very noisy and so there see if that helps um so uh, this greeting we learned in the eastern part of congo i would say it was in 2015 or something we were there together Ulf and myself in a fantastic place called city of joy um, what was created by Dr. Uh, Dennis McQuaig, who is a gynecologist and the Nobel Peace Prize winner, um, together with uh, Eve Ensler, who is a playwright from the US, from New York, uh, who has helped in founding this place. There is a rehabilitation center for young women who have been um, subjected to gender-based violence in the conflict over minerals in the eastern part of Congo. Um, and these young women there, they were showing us this when we were showing tapping. They said, oh, let us show you something. So this is a greeting. So you just follow. Uh, it's, um, and then you see how you feel about it. Uh, yeah. So what do you say? One, two, three. Three, one, two, three. And then one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, up. So once more, and two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, to yourself. One, two, three, one, two, three, to the front. One, two, three, one, two, three, up to the sky, the ceiling. Good, we can do it one more time, come on. Yeah, oh, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, up. And keep your hands in the air. Keep your hands in the air. Just, Just feel out what's going on right now. Yes, people. Yeah. Join me. Here you are. This is what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, so this is, you know, um, this greeting has, so whatever it makes you, what it makes you think of or associate with, 
please um, just write something in the in the chat what associations you you get from this because it's a it's one of those techniques we call it a technique or exercise that we keep sharing um, and it's always a suggestion for you to to use it as much as you like in school or in church or if you have a group session with um, um, some addiction training or I mean or what you say and um, whatever whatever group you go into because doing things together Ulf brings brings us together brings us together exactly synchronizes us puts our heartbeats together puts our breathing our heart rate variability our tuning in the systemic field of consciousness of us actually mm. every time you do something synchronized with other people you are investing into the same field yeah and it is like that because everything that goes into rhythm this is a very simple rhythm it's one two three one two three and then you clap on your own chest and then one two three one two three to the front you know and one two three one two three up and like some of you are writing I and mean, susanna writes ubuntu which means being together yeah it, we are together and you me and heavens comes from kimberly yeah it is like that you know me you and then heaven you can get some energy from heaven or you pray for heaven I'm my friend in the, also on the same coast in Sweden. She's right, beautiful. Yeah, we love this, you know. And so much fun is from Beth, which is that it also brings joy because it's like a bit funny and it is something strange. You don't expect it to be done, you know. And, and you know, so it is like that. You can all do things. So this greeting, please bring it with you. And like this, what you call this, burn sure in English. I forgot the name of the, 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 the picture of the... Praying What are they called? They called? Praying Manti. Manti, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it is like that beautiful gesture. It's also since I have these friends from Rwanda. In Rwanda, you do the, a lot of dancing. It's like the hands towards the sky, but they're the symbol, like the horns of a cow, you know, because it's always important with the cow. But it's also praising, you know. And that's why we call this also, this is also called the power pose, isn't it, Ulf? Yep, that's the power pose. And the power pose, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, something that comes from Amy, Amy Cuddy who was studying this, finding that there are power poses that people do when they are full of joy and express it physically with their body. And when you do that, what actually happens is you're actually producing hormones of joy and satisfaction. So yeah. before we join any further into this, we can ch try just to explore the extent of this. So if you put your hands in the air like this, and now you lower your hands so that we can see them on the screen, you lift your head a little bit up, and you play the piano upside down like you're tickling the beard of a very small elephant in front of you. There you go. Maybe and a little maybe. smile on your lips. Yeah. N not the kind of crazy, you know, neighbors calling the police smile, but more the kind of nobody sees me and I'm happy smile. There you go. Now what this does to you, this is an extreme non-defensive position. Very few people do this when they are threatened. So try saying life is complicated out loud. Life is complicated. Life is complicated. It's very hard. Yeah. I don't know if I can do this. It's yeah. impossible. We've tried it before. I might as well just give up and say, give up like that. Yeah. There you go. So that's the neurology, the neurobiology of your body. When you put your body in a position where your body is safe, Whatever your mind says will be reflected through the safeness of the body. And most of these psychosensory techniques that we're teaching uh, are all based on these facts. And in the other end of these facts, you will find that we are producing hormones of joy when we assume positions of joy. Yeah. So that is, I mean, what we all are, what we are doing here, it is to find ways of making the body feel safe, you know, because the symptoms of stress and trauma are in the body. That's where the palpitation is, that's where the, the, the stomach ache is, the headache, or whatever it is, the tension of the muscles. And that's why we do all these things with the body to release, you know, the tension of the mind, because it's either bot <clears throat> bottom up or top down. And we go a lot bottom up, because it is a very easy way that anybody can do, whether you know how to read or write or, you know, you have studied or not, you can do things with your body that yes. helps the mind to get clear and feel safe. And here's the thing. Stress and trauma are basically the same thing. Stress is something that happens when we're stressed and trauma is when we are stressed a lot. 
Now, post-traumatic stress is stress that happened a lot in the past that's triggered in the now. Now, the only thing your body needs to do to get rid of one of those encodings is, I like this word, is to create a juxtaposition where the traumatic response is put together with a non-traumatic response. So the body's relaxed and the memory is trying to trigger the fear, but it won't. So at the end, it flops. It just decomposes, it depotentiates. And that's what we're gonna teach you today. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. so that's great. Uh, so um, we are together. So there was somebody who has a problem there with, with uh, here at the same time, but I think it will manage. Mm -hmm. I think everything will be fine. Yeah. One day. Yeah, so these are these mantis. We want to show you some pictures um, from places that we have worked and experiences that we have had along this way with specifically this hero technique of TTT, but all these other things that we also show you, you know, to make it a, a complete way of, of helping yourself and others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a, one of the participants here, Kimberly, she was at the Havening Conference in the weekend, which was a 44 hour marathon worldwide. Um, and, and we will be touching around with that as well. So uh, emotional first aid around the world, ripples of healing, that's what we're here to do. And you are part of this ripple. Welcome mm -hmm. here, Ripple. Yeah, because it is like, so we start actually in the other end, which is in the havening end, because that's also a technique that we share since we have learned it on the way. Ulf is also a, a trainer. And as you said, this conference was here in the weekend. And it's also a very simple and very super efficient technique. So here is one of our colleagues in Uganda. Let's see if this it doesn't play for me. Are you going to play it? Then you have to share your desktop. No, it doesn't play. Okay, it will play in a few seconds. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay. Yeah, so this is a small short piece. I don't know, um, it might have been a bit jumpy. Um, this video, but it is to show another technique that we will also get back to, isn't it? Or we're going to do a short practice already now to confuse a bit to start in this? Practice already now. I think we're, yeah. we're feeling extremely hands on today. Yeah. So, um, what we'll do is we'll just have everybody try it. So, he's singing about this little tiny invisible flea that bites you and bugs you, but nobody else can see it, and it comes in the night just like sensations of trauma can do. So what you do is you put your hands on your shoulders and you pull down. So let's just do this like this. Okay. Yeah, and you can get a little groovy. And we can, you know, we can just You can sing with me. Yeah, I didn't hear you singing out loud there. Maybe you have kids falling asleep, but I don't know. But it was good. Yeah, so all of these things are using the neurobiology of the body, and we're using, we often do this with music as a way of teaching it in groups and transferring it. And that was self havening. Havening. So I write it in the chat. It is called Havening to everyone. Um, havening, that is it. Hey, no, I wrote it wrong. So let me call it Havening. Like safe haven. Havening. Hmm. Yeah, so that is one of the techniques. We will be <clears throat> coming back to it a bit later on. So it is very simple. It is just pulling over the shoulders. So you start on the top of your shoulders and pulling down. And it is not the way of, you know, like caressing. It is a way of, of really kind of properly stroking. It also consists of, of, of 
uh, what you say, doing the same movement with your hands, like this, that you can do during a conversation with somebody who is going into stress. You can just ask them also over the telephone in these online times. You can say, just put your hands, your palms together and move them as if you had like a piece of clay or something between your, um, your hands that you are making into a small bowl, you know, so it is like, and also this, like Ulf did before, you know, you can sing something or listen or just humming a bit or just, you know, continue your conversation like that. And that will calm down. We have so many nerve ends on the, on the hands. And this movement makes calm for the mind. It's, it means for the mind, calm. Again, what we do with your body will always affect the mind and the other way around. But this is one. And then the other one they did in the face. But we generally use this hand and then not this shoulder. Isn't it? Yeah. And now remember, this was not the hero technique. This was the aperitif, not the main course. So the main course here is a technique called trauma tapping. But you will be learning both because they are interchangeable. They use the same neurobiology to create change. Now we're going to go on here and give you a little idea about our work and what we do and where we've been using this so that you can get inspired and walk straight out after this and start um, training people in your neighborhood. Yeah, and sharing it with whoever you meet, you know, because that's really how to do this. And that comes back to the word Ubuntu that was written in the beginning by Susanna, uh, meaning we are here together. So we share what we have. So we're going to look at, we talked about ripples of healing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to ask ourselves, you know. Yeah, what is the ripple of healing? What is the world? Yeah, what kind of world is that world that we're sending these ripples through? And what is emotional first aid? What kind of first aid? And what kind of emotional? Mm. And what is actually a ripple of healing? Because that is, you know, so these are the questions that we asked ourselves, you know, with putting yeah. this title. So the world, actually, it's a quite big place. It's pretty impressive. It's 7 billion people. Uh, 64 million people are displaced, probably more now since we did this slide, uh, even if it was just a while ago. Uh, and displaced means that they don't have a home, they, whether they are running or refugees in their own country or in another country. Mm -hmm. And then we have a coronavirus pandemic. So we're all refugees, but we're refugees in our homes. So that's kind of different. Mm -hmm. Which also has its implications for many. So yeah. the, our question then was, what can we do about this? You know? So that's why we're here today, because we want to, to contribute with something. Yep. So there's a word in Kenya Rwanda. Yeah, which is one of our favorite words and um, one of two. And this is, it's um, said Turikumwe, which means we are all together. So this word we use um, very much like Ubuntu. It is, they are very going together. Ubuntu is more from the South, Af South Africa. We're using the word of Ubuntu and in other parts of there. And Turikumwe is the same. And in and in Swahili, it's Tuku Pamoja. So we all are here together. So we learn and we share. Yeah, and Turikumwe looks pretty cool as a word. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is Vikram Patel. He's a professor in global mental health. Uh, he, he comes from India. He used to be in Africa and now he's in the US. And he has something called the Sundar vision. And it's a vision of how we can change uh, mental health care, emotional health care um, around the world by doing some very simple changes to how it is regarded now. So the first uh, letter in the acronym SUNDAR is to simplify. Now, yeah, and simplify, simplify is like what we, in the way that we do with some techniques, we don't uh, teach the full, <laughs> we simplify things so that they can reach more people. Simplifying the language most of all, because simplifying the language and getting out of all these um, really hard and tricky languages that are in the DSM-5 for diagnostics. Because uh, if you look at all the different uh, possible disorders and syndromes that you have, they all have a common root. All of them share the symptoms of stress and trauma. All of them become worse with stress and trauma. So we could simplify it all down to that if we would like to. And unpack is unpacking the treatment. So if, if we have a common root, a common denominator in all of these, uh, and that is stress and trauma, then why don't we unpack the treatments so that we actually go for the stress and trauma first? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we're constantly trying to do and seeing in all different kinds of treatment, what is it that we are? And then deliver, meaning that you, you, know, you deliver what you have <clears throat> and also in the places where people are. 
Yeah, so I mean, if, if you do a, a free training in some countries uh, where people have a challenge, uh, you know, having to go to get water every day, for example, or, or just making ends meet, then even if the training is free, if it's too far away from people, it won't reach them. So it should be delivered by people next to them. The people in school, the people training sports, the people uh, in, in the whatever local activity they have, the churches. Yeah, and of course, affordable, meaning that it's like this. We do these trainings because we see that yeah, many people can be reached by not having to pay too much money for having a training. Um, because if it is too expensive, people will not be reached. You know? yeah. And then we should reallocate. We should reallocate the resources. So we're not saying that we don't need professional mental health care. We do absolutely need that. And we're not saying that you should refrain from going to get that. But so much can be done with very simple interventions like the ones we're teaching here so that the people who are professionals can take care of the cases that need the help the most. And all the other cases before they even get worse could get treatment on level one from somebody standing next to them. Yeah, so that's the Sundar vision. So we share that Sundar vision. So our own work, it started somewhere, and, and uh, this work started actually in South Sudan. At that time, it was Southern Sudan, because it was before liberation in 2011. Um, and um, for me, it was, uh, I'm, I come from um, journalism. Uh, so I was in South Sudan during the, 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 the war. And, um, and listening to a lot of horrific stories uh, from many uh, people, especially children because I was doing a work about children's rights um, and especially then when I was listening to Adut who was telling about her story how her village was attacked by some um, by rebel groups from the north and uh, she was abducted to to become a slave in, 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 in a village in the north and then she was liberated and coming back and when she was telling these experiences what she had seen you know to create these stories you have to ask all those things what is it you know that makes a good story. It is to ask all those details, all those details about things. But that's also asking details means that you easily re-traumatize somebody. And then, you know, I didn't have any tool to, to assist her. I had my tool of writing, but not the tool of healing the, the wounds that were opened by her telling her, her story. So from there on, um, it was for me inside some a kind of a conflict, you can say, about this getting a story but not having any way to, to assist in, in, in the healing process except for assistance from people understanding the situation. But in that moment with her, Adut, um, I had nothing to give her except for some, you know, some soda, some, some drinks and some stuff, but not healing her wounds. Yeah, so you went back and you found out that there was this person who was actually helping people with trauma. And you, had did, a, you did a training in TFT, thought field therapy, the original modality of tapping that came from active kinesiology uh, from Roger Callahan. And then you found out that Dr. Carl Johnson in the US, who had been helping war veterans coming back from the US wars uh, handle their post-traumatic stress, he wanted to go to, he went to Kosovo where he um, applied tapping and got results that were published in the first period journal. Uh, the journal. Yeah, yeah, and that was in 2001. And you know, he was trained in what, as you said, in the, in the original modality called thought field therapy, TFT, thought field therapy. Um, and um, in Kosovo, he had his shared this because for him, he said that, yeah, I have learned all these other kind of methods and techniques in psychology because he's a professor of psychology. Um, but not until I learned this, I see that my clients really heal. And in Kosovo, he found the same. And the people were, you know, also the, the healthcare system there, they said, wow, it's now that we see change in our population. So um, with him, I don't know, we contacted him and, and um, to see and learn from his experiences because we saw that with this, you could really help people who are traumatized, but you need somebody who can assist you to be your mentor. And Dr. Johnson became our mentor. So this is the picture when we went on the first journey to Burundi and Rwanda in the central parts of Africa where we knew people already since before who survived the genocide. Yeah. And uh, one, one of the things that uh, is the difference in 
TTT, the trauma tapping technique or the tension tapping technique, as we also call it sometimes, is that we don't use verbal affirmations or setup phrases. And one of the reasons is because we are working mainly with people who are traumatized. Traumatized people don't need to connect. They are connected 24 seven. So what Carl says is talk isn't necessary. People have suffered enough because sometimes uh, when you uh, talk about a traumatic incident, even if you're affirming it into something nice, uh, it could be re-traumatizing. So it's, it's usually never necessary. Now, some people do want to talk about it and that's fine, but it's never necessary. And this enables us to work across language barriers and in large groups. Yeah. So one of the things that Dr. Johnson also said when we had been to Rwanda sometimes together, he was teaching us all what he had learned through all his years working with tapping with trauma. And he said one thing, specialize on trauma because there are very few people who can help those who are traumatized. They suffer too much. And the second thing was that go to those forgotten places and help the most vulnerable people. And, and one of the places we went to many years later after going to, you know, um, Rwanda, Congo, South Sudan, Sierra Leone, um, and many other countries around, and Chad, and, you know, we went to Greece together, Ulf and myself. Yep. And there, in, that was specifically in 2015 when we came there, when there were many refugees. I mean, the big influx of refugees to Europe from many parts of the world, but specifically from Syria, because in, the war in Syria had really <coughs> expanded. And also from Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, and other countries of the, on the African continent, Congo, and Cameroon, and other places. So there, actually, but the first time we came, we didn't, we were called not to help the refugees. And how come? Well, that was funny, wasn't it? Everybody thought we went there to assist refugees. Why yeah. didn't we? We thought, we thought Maria had a cafe down in the harbor. She said, it's good that you're here to help the volunteers. Because there's something that happens when you volunteer, especially when the volunteers are young people in their 20s. Uh, usually, uh, it was a lot of girls from Norway in this case that were going down there, but people from all over the world. And young people are full of enthusiasm and want to stay awake 24 seven so that they can help when there's a boat coming. So there's something called NGO burnout. It happens really fast. It can be just a few days. When you skip sleep, your system shuts down. So Maria at the harbor, she would say, I'm happy you're here to help the volunteers because they seem a bit stressed. Last night, a boat arrived and they were jumping into the water. These people had been freezing in the dark night for hours, 80 people in a boat for 10. And, and the volunteers, jumped in and started shouting, here, here, come over here, come over here, give me the babies, uh, we have to save everything. And a woman was standing with her baby, you know, a little bit of hypothermia, maybe, or cold and, and happy to ride to the shore. And, you know, an eager volunteer wants to help the baby, so takes the baby and runs to a shelter where it can get warm, but forgets that the mother is in the boat. So these things happen. And we, we were there that time to uh, help the volunteers to understand how important it is to take care of yourself. And our message to you is the same. Whoever you're gonna yeah. be helping, take care of yourself. Yeah, that is also actually one of the things that we say about this first clapping we did in the beginning of the training. It is first yourself and then you assist others because you have to keep, keep calm because that's, you remember, the most important thing is safety, to feel safe. Nobody feels safe if somebody's screaming, but if you can stand with both your feet on the ground and say, welcome you know, we are here to assist you. Also, another thing was that at this time, the refugees didn't have to stay on the islands. They were just passing through and up in the different parts of Europe, which is different today. We still work in, in Lesbos and some of the islands in Greece, but today people are caught there, you know. So today we go there to assist the, the refugees, but at this time they needed their adrenaline, they needed their push to be able to continue running because you need your, you know, your heightened state of, of body and mind when you are, are running, you cannot relax because they still needed to, you know, get to, to other places. Yep. So, TTT, it's a tool for all. So yeah. if, anybody can learn, anybody can use. You don't need to have any prior knowledge. You don't need to be an expert. Just learn the sequence and have a, a, a full open heart when you, when you offer it to somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for us it was like, you know, that simplification of the technique from TFT, it is a simplification, I could say, or from EFT, emotional freedom technique, which is the one, if you Google 
tapping or something, you will find most EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique. But this TTT is a tool for all because we have simplified it, both in language and the technique itself, and found that this is very helpful because many people can be reached. Of course, we work specifically also with clients and one-to-one, -one, but our specialty is to work with groups and share this with many. And don't be scared of you know, what happens if they change it a bit or if they do something different. It doesn't matter as long as you do these things to calm the body-mind. Yep. And it started in Rwanda. Uh, and, and, and that picture, actually, the last one was actually from, from Congo, where we worked also with the Batwa community, the, the, what we in colloquial terms is called the, the pygmies, the original inhabitants of the forest there. And one other thing that we will come back to, it is what we call find your ally, find the person who can connect you. Because people ask, well, how did you get there? You know, did you just go and call and put up the sign that, hello, you are traumatized, will you join a workshop? No. We go through somebody. So Dominique in the middle of the picture with a big smile. He grew up in this village, even if he's not a Batwa, but he had an extra mother who was a Batwa. And he said that these people are so traumatized. Can we do something? So he already had the trust from the people there. So that's why he could bring this Muzungu, this white guy, this woman there and so, and to do the training. Yeah. So uh, another tool that we've discovered uh, because we, you're here to learn these different tools and find how to use it. It is uh, one of the most useful tools when those um, refugees came to the island of Lesbos was TAS. So take this to your heart and remember it because all these three letter cures are there for a reason. So TAS is T and a smile. Mm -hmm. If that's the only thing you offer a person when you're centered, seeing them, showing with a smile there's a safe place and that you are there to help them that will do more than any technique you learn. Yeah. Tea and a smile or coffee and a smile, depending on where you are. Mm. Yeah. So why don't we learn a technique? Yeah. Please. Let's have a technique. Let's have some TTT. Yeah, let's have some TTT. Yeah, three times T. <laughs> yeah. We do it with Winky or we just, you do it first, just. I think you do it. I, mm -hmm. I have a feeling <laughs> it's your day today. It's going to be oh. <laughs> the people are getting ready. So uh, please put your video on if you can so that we can see that you're following it. Hmm. Yeah, so, so TTT is um, the hero technique. So we'll do that now. So you sit up with your spine comfortably erect, you know, so don't sit down like, you know, like a sack of something, but sit up straight, straighten up, you uh, know, and you both your feet in the ground or in the floor or wherever you are, but something that under your feet and take a couple of just deep breaths. You breathe in through your nose. Hold your breath for a little while and then breathe out. And then again, you breathe in. Hold your breath for a while and then breathe out. Very good. And then if you like, you know, you can now, if you close your eyes for a little while and then you look for something, not a big T, but not the big S either of stress or trauma, but just look for something that in some way bothers you, you know, um, just to, you know, for yourself to, to check what this technique does for you uh, and in the long run, what it means it can do for others. So you do what we call a SUD, a subjective unit of distress from zero to 10. Zero is no. Um, problem or no distress and 10 is a lot so you find something you just and check you connect, connect to it ever so lightly is what we say so don't open the door on on, on you know fully wide just connect just take it just connect just pass it you know a bit you know, and let's see what it is so you have to find something because without connecting there is nothing really to work on and then you put your hands up with the, the number of fingers expressing how much you can connect to that. So 10 was a lot of distress and zero is nothing. And keep them up. And we do this so that we also can check so that we know where you are, where you're going after. And if somebody needs help afterwards, you just contact us. You should be good and fine. You're in safe hands. Life will be good. Yeah. So put up your hands um, now. And your fingers in a number, we see you all, so you do it, even you, Placid, I see you. <laughs> Our dear colleague. <laughs> 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 
just put up your number, whatever you have found, you know. There you go. That's good. Yeah, good. Remember so then, yeah, so just remember that number. And then we start the tapping, you know. So we start on the side of the hand. So you tap with two or three fingers on the side, what we call the karate side of the hand here. And you do 10 to 15 times. or 12 or something and from there we go up to the put your thumbs on your temples and then you do what we call a crown pull meaning you give some massage to your frontal lobe this part of the brain that is offline impaired when you are stressed and specifically are traumatized that's why people cannot really focus study or do things when you're traumatized very difficult okay and then from there, you take your two fingers and you tap just above the nose where the eyebrows start like here above the nose. Or if you have eyebrows going together, then it's just above the nose where the nose starts. Okay. And then you follow the eyebrows to the outside of the eye. And then you tap on both sides of your head with the, one of the fingers on the bone here outside and the other ones will reach in towards the temples. Very good. Beautiful. Well done. And then you go under the eyes on top of the, these bones here, these hills, like the hills of Rwanda. Here are some hills under your eyes. Which is a, and then you go with one hand under the nose. So you tap between the nose and the upper lip. And then you go under the mouth, so between the under lip and the chin in this little valley here. Very good. And then you go down to the chest. And now excuse myself if this microphone sounds a bit when jumping. So you do it all over your chest. This is what we call gorilla tapping since we started this work in the area where the mountain gorillas still dwell. Even if one of them actually was killed the other day in Uganda, I saw that they, that's where they are in Uganda, Rwanda, and Congo. That's where we have had our center of learning in this technique. Okay, and then you put one hand on the shoulder and then you tap on the side of your body on the ribs. Okay, very good. And then you go to the fingers. So you start with your little finger here on top of the finger. On the little finger. And then you go to the next, which is the ring finger. And then go to the next, which is the long finger. And then to the next, which is the index finger. The thumb walks on top of the, on the thumb. And then you go back again to the chest. So you do one time more on the chest. That is because many people feel a lot of relief. You can actually also do some now in these Corona times. Very good. You do some tapping also on your uh, sternum, the breastbone, because behind there is the thymus gland, which is very crucial in immune system functioning. So give that some massage through the sternum. It's protected by the, the breastbone. Hmm. Very good. Important. Okay. And then, then you release your arms. You put them on your lap. And then you breathe again. So you breathe in through your nose. You breathe in. You hold your breath for a while. And then you breathe out. A bit slower. And again, you breathe in. Hold your breath. And then breathe out. Very good. And then you repeat. So you do it if you did on your left hand before, now you do on your right hand or vice versa. And if you don't remember, it doesn't matter. Just do on one of the hands again. But often as a right-handed or I mean dominant right hand, you started on the left hand and vice versa. And then you go up again to do this crown pull, this massage for the frontal lobe to give some circulation to the logic thinking and the rational part so and then you go here no here you go and tap here on above the nose 
and then you go to the outside of the eye. And then you go under the eye on this top of the bone under the and then you go with one hand under the nose and then under the mouth in the valley on the chin and then you come down again to the chest don't forget to breathe and then you go under the arm again so on the side of your body very good and now you do the fingers so you start with your little finger the ring finger the next one the next one and the thumb Okay, and then back to the chest. I mean, the chest is center of emotions. We have the heart and the lungs, it's the lymphatic drain points. It is the area of releasing oxytocin. You know, when you have a baby that will tap on the chest to, for connection. Oxytocin is for the connecting hormone. Okay, and then a bit sternum also on the breastbone. Okay, very good. And now the breathing again. So you put down your hands in the lap, on the lap, and then you breathe in. Hold your breath. And then breathe out. Holding the breath has also a very good meaning. Holding the breath, which is very good. It presses oxygen and blood into the heart, and then breathe out. Very good. And then again, now you close your eyes. So if you have them closed, you keep them closed a while. And then you go back to what you thought about, what you connected to in the beginning, what you did this number for. And then you check now, just for yourself, um, if something has changed, what do you notice in this moment? If something has changed, and then you check again, if you can give it a number now um, compared to when you started this process and when you found the number. You can just hold up your fingers um, like before. Okay, very good, wonderful. So that's just, that's a way of checking for yourself. And if you work with somebody, it's a way because it's all subjective what happens. We cannot put a blood sample. Good, thank you so much. That was a TTT session. We don't hear you. I just wanna get a little bit of what you felt and thought about this. Um, now you can write in the chat uh, your experience. How does it, what it, what's the difference that you notice? Uh, what can you notice is different now? And what happened now for, as you, if you were watching other people, when you, when everybody held up their hands, you would see that some people had a high number and it went down to a lower number for some, it goes to zero for some, it doesn't. Now there's nothing wrong or right with this. It's simply that if it is an event, in the past that is very clearly limited from other parts of your life, then that kind of event is often depotentiated down to a zero. But if it's an event that has several aspects, or if it's an event that's still going on in your life, then it would be very strange for the stress to go all the way down. Usually there's a reason where it stops. It's not that the technique didn't, wasn't done properly or should have gone more. Usually there's a reason for every place the number stops. And we usually say that emotions are like layers of an onion. So if you start with a seven or eight or a nine, or even like, like Anne was having a higher number, then that could be a feeling of anxiety or frustration or something. And then once that is gone, it goes down the number. And then under that emotion could be another emotion. Under sadness could be anger. Under anger could be emptiness. Under emptiness could be joy. So you yeah. just have to continue tapping down through the layers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is, you know, and when we see that something changes, we say that we end the session with congratulations. You know, it is like, because it is like your healing system is activated and that's why. So it's, 
it's never you know it's ourselves who are the, the 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 healers you know who who help this and like somebody wrote here that starting yawning yawning is also a way of releasing excess energy and so that is and some people will you know feel calm others will feel like oh i feel like sleeping and some get energized you know depending on where you are in your um your daily cycle of of of, of energy you know so it is like um, fantastic. Um, thank you so much for writing. There was something else. Um, yeah, went up to hmm? units of distress. Hmm? SUD, and it's uh, how much stress you currently feel thinking about it, because whatever it was in the past, it's it's what's there now that that actually counts. Yeah, subjective units of distress. Hmm. Yeah, so we were thinking of of asking um, our colleague uh, Placid, if you have a good connection, um, could you tell a bit about your experiences of using this technique? Because Placid is our communication officer and special training of East Africa. Um, <laughs> he has also trained Osoke, who is here in the, in, the, in the meeting. So Placid, if you unmute your microphone and just some short words. Um. Thank you so much for having me today. Yeah, thank you for joining. Yeah, um, sorry I came right because I was outside and the jam was too much, the traffic. Yeah. Yeah, um, I have so many like uh, testimonies and experiences, um, which is not easy to share in this short time that we have. Uh, the first thing is, um, to myself, I call it like a weapon of healing. Um, to myself, because I've been so struggling a lot, especially with nightmares, um, with some uh, strange behaviors. <laughs> Sometimes I could wonder, am I really a normal person? <laughs> I couldn't cry. I mean, when I was sad, I mean, I was like, what's wrong with myself? So when I met Gunila, like um, it's going to be almost four years ago. It was like turning point. They, they trained me, let alone I met Ulf and they keep like practicing. They, every day I was like doing like a self-realization, like seeing a change. And I could make a call, do you know Gunila? This and this has happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have been my big teacher. One of my big teachers, big, biggest teachers for both me and Ulf, yeah, yeah. I think I'm becoming normal, that's what Placid would say, you know. I'm starting to shed tears. I think I'm becoming normal. I can feel, even feel happy. Yeah, so that is good. But you have also trained a lot of people. Yeah, it, yeah, of course. When I got to see how it is really important, so I, it became part of my mission life to, to share as much as as possible with with the people around in here in Africa, I had also opportunity to come to see them. Yeah, and <laughs> Pakistan. You did trainings in Pakistan and also. Pakistan. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so we we're trying to make like a more like a disciples, like a network that we we teach people who are who can also share with us as well. So okay, is there we have one of our hero also John who is in Uganda. And so more people around who are appreciating this, who have seen that it's easy to learn and easy to teach and easy to heal, if we can say that, to, <laughs> to change the life of people with, with the short and the, like rest costs almost nothing. It's just willingness and uh, to see there is a need. So I think this is what I can say. Yeah, I mean, Namaste. I can just, yeah, Namaste. no, but it is like, yeah, I can just say some of the places we have also been doing trainings together, like in mm. almost all the prisons in Rwanda with also perpetrators, mm. not only survivors of the genocide, but also perpetrators because everybody is stressed and traumatized and to change society, we need to change. It's like now with all these protests with Black Lives Matter. I mean, it is like so much mm. anger and so much frustration in people. So if you can help, you know, to, to find ways that people can come together. Anyway, thank you so much, Placid, and keep going. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, Camilla, we had a question that scrolled by. Uh, the difference to EFT is the main, is the only difference that we don't speak. Yeah, I mean, it is like we said at the beginning. So for those who don't know EFT, emotional freedom technique, 
uh, uses what is called a setup phrases among one of the things, which is um, a statement that you do to, to be able to connect. Um, for some, it can be very good and, and it is like, how is it, um, Gwyneth used to say, it is like when um, sometimes you need words and sometimes you don't need words. And for some, words can be hurting. Uh, so that's why you can say that, yeah, that's the, the, one of the biggest difference between, because you use the same points for tapping, which also TFT, thought field therapy does, and many others, the same points are used, which also correlates with acupuncture points, which are points that goes, you know, communicates well with the brain, sending signals to the brain that things are fine, you know, calming down the body and then sending that signal to the brain. To make it sound. so that is one of the biggest differences so we teach many people who have learned eft not to say that oh no stop with eft do ttt no it is to find sometimes it's better not to use words and since we have specialized in trauma remember that that is our even if we use it for many other things but that's the reason why it's called trauma tapping technique most of the time since ulf also said it's also called tension tapping technique when we need it but for people are traumatized to repeat what they have been through can be very devastating. It's not for everybody, and we repeat this. It's fine to talk for those who want to talk, but it is very important, and many find it so helpful to be able to do it in this silence. It's like a meditation rather than. And also, uh, I mean, you could, you could say that there are some and none and a lot of differences, but the, the main thing that we do is we have, uh, we have an approach to how we do it and why we do it. We're not doing this to resolve every issue down to zero. We're doing this to teach people a very fast way to help themselves and others to connect to and resolve issues um, in general. And we have ruled out a lot of things that are complicated, that could complicate working with trauma. Talking is one of them. Also our evaluation model and our explanation model is slightly different. But all these techniques are overlapping. So um, we wouldn't say that, that you know, we would say that we have so many people working with EFT that actually add this to their toolbox and um, and use it mm. a lot. Yeah, so that is, I mean, it is like, uh, again, we, re we repeat what you said in the beginning, we call this emotional first aid, you know, ripples of healing. So to do this work all over, we call it first aid. That is something that you can do, you know, to, to decrease, uh, which is useful for many. And then you can work, I mean, when you have time, you have your own private practice, you can do it specifically. That was the expertise of Dr. Johnson. He was very much uh, directed towards the individual. He wanted to do it completely clean down to the, to the zero. Then we saw that, yeah, but this is good. We can do something to, to help many because many needs help. Yeah. And like Susanna saying, is it important to think about something stressful or is it enough to register how much stress we feel in our body before and after? So whatever your brain activates, right? So if you're just in general feeling stressed and you do this, you will in general de-stress. If you specifically activate the neural networks that belong to a specific memory or trigger or stimuli or period of your life, then you will activate those specific neurons and they will be resolved. So if you want to resolve a past traumatic event, you need to activate it it's not gonna be enough to just feel how stressed you are in general, right? Mm. Because the, what happens in the brain is that when something triggers a memory, your brain goes and fetches it from long-term memory, it goes to the amygdala and it activates a defense mechanism, which is post-traumatic stress. It's a defense mechanism to warn you that this might be happening again, which activates all those neurons. And when you do the tapping, those specific neurons are depotentiated. Mm. So the connection is no longer there. It is like dissolving the connection into the amygdala, into the alarm center. Yes, yeah, so Adara, she also writes this, that she's an EFT practitioner, that she says that but having to talk and cycle through is a huge difference, but not talking about a tragic or past traumatic event is extremely helpful. Yeah, in some situations, that's why I love TTT, that's what she writes. Yeah, and for some it is like that, but as you say, the answer to everything is it depends. It always depends where you are, with whom, you know, what situation, what that person wants. And it's the person who needs the, the assistance with this, who is the boss. So whether he or she wants to talk, fine. If he or she does not want to talk, it's fine. So that's why, you know, we create this space, which is, 
in a way non-specific, but can go very specific. Do you agree, Ulf? Yes, I do. And also somebody is saying a very good question. Uh, I'll, I'll take it to general. I won't say who asked it. Um, so if, if it is a child you're working with, would you need to have them connect to that before they start? If you want to treat that aspect of the child's memories, yes, but you don't have to go there. You can just start the tapping, start a relaxation, and then just mention, you know, if you're speaking the same language as the child, just saying, if it's something that happened in school, you can just say, hey, you know, all these things that happen in school, that would be enough. Because when people have this memory that is easily activated, just touching by it is enough. Now, do we have the sequence written? Yes, you're getting a book from this Daniela with, where everything is written down. You're getting a free app with all the cycles and everything. Um, and also, if uh, Dutzen is asking group health, if the level of stress after a round lowering is but not yet at a satisfactory level, would you go to another round? Yes, uh, with one condition, that the person who decides if it is a satisfactory level is not you, it's the person you're tapping. Because if a person says, I am at four or three now, then the question is, are you happy to stay there or would you like another round? You do not have to wait for the next round, but some people are not prepared to let go completely of a defense mechanism. They might want to stay at four, three, or two, and they are happy with that and let it sink in. So remember, it's always the client that decides if you go on or not. Mm. Yeah, so, um, so this sequence, we're also going to do another repetition, but well, did you have some other idea? Do you want to go another picture of the, of the PowerPoint? What do you think? Well, Before I was, we go. I think maybe we should do some music. What do you say? Yeah, yeah I think we should do the music. I think uh, let's do the... Um, uh, Ulf is also, pro also a prof professional musician. So he wrote this song, which is called um, um, Two Fingers Tapping, that you also find on our website. Uh, it is a um, song because we also encourage people to go into music or whatever you have. But music is very good, rhythm or humming or whatever, because when you're traumatized or stressed, you're out of rhythm. It is like things go a bit jerky. Uh, and to help yourself and others to get into rhythm again, if you have the possibility. I mean, even if you're not a musician and you don't know, you can just play this video that we're going to show you. And hopefully it will not be as... Uh, jerky as the, it was last time otherwise you can just see it on our on uh, look at it on our website mm -hmm. and remember it don't mean a thing yeah, go ahead, it is a that swing. what did you say if i didn't see it, it came from thing if you ain't got that swing so no. when, when you're out of rhythm <laughs> you're traumatized when you're traumatized you're out of rhythm yeah so, are you going to share your desktop yeah i'm going to share my desktop and so here is is that visible yeah. so and i'm going to take um, so people tap along now. Yeah. So just tap along with this one. So here we go. This is Rwanda. Rubavi. <laughs> Do as I do, let me show this to you, all I say is that is help, help me. If you want to let go of the misery, you know, if you want to set your nightmares free. G -t -t. Now look at the left side of your hand where the little bit meets the ball. That part is called the karate spot. This is where you start a beat call. Come along now. Two fingers down the wind, a simple along. Both hands now where your eyebrows be. Two fingers down the wind, a simple beat. You can see. On the side of your eyes where your temple lies. Two fingers down the wind, a simple beat. Under your eyes. Two fingers that we 
That was that was two fingers. So that is one of the songs. We are many songs. We have always encouraged people to do songs. So there is our songs from all over the place. Um, so next time we will play the other the other. Um, we have like a clip from different countries where people have made songs. Mm -hmm. So that is very nice. So that was a song written by Ulf, and then we performed it together with these acrobats in. In Rubavo, Gus and Gisenyi, um, and um, yeah, to have an instruction video, you know, so with some joy. Okay, that's very good. So that is so one of the ways, you know, you can show a video like this. We have another one, uh, which is a cartoon, which is the same like in the app, the Self Help for Trauma app, that is both for Android and and iPhones uh, for free, as we said before. There is uh, a small video with an instruction. There is also this GIF and these moving images uh, about how to do this. So uh, there are all these different materials. So you don't have to remember or the sequence from, from this training. And you can always go back and look at other materials. Yes, my dear. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as you felt the energy is kind of different when you do it singing uh, also there's a lot of different things that happen when you do this with music uh, and uh, we'd like to just short um, touch ground on that because emotional first aid is about getting back into rhythm like we said it don't mean a thing if you ain't got that swing and if you don't have the swing you're probably not having too much fun either so emotional first aid is about smiling. The T and the smile that we talked about in the beginning. 
if you smile, something happens actually. And there's been a study saying that if you put a pen in your mouth, like this, and you have it for three minutes a day, it's going to change the way your dopamine production works in the brain, and you will start to get a change that's walking down, and you will become happier. Yeah. And actually show that doing that just three to five minutes a day could change a lot of how you feel. It's part of Amy Cuddy's uh, study as well. Yeah, so it is like, and then coming back to this with rhythm, because it's not only rhythm dancing, it is rhythm doing things. You know, when you are stressed, you drop things or you bump, bump into people or so, because you're out of rhythm. When you are in rhythm and you flow through things and you find it and people come in time, and you know, it is like that. So that's also rhythm. And when you see a person who is just, you know, happy or thrilled or going to their first date, you know, in a long time or in love, they will sail and they will have a kind of groove where they're walking because they're enjoying every aspect of life. And this is the kind of rhythm you want to get back into, the joy and love of yeah. life. Rhythm. And that is also goes with this dancing of the very important nerve, the biggest nerve of the body, the vagus nerve, that is called the 10th cranial um, nerve, which Ann Wickström, who is in this training, knows everything about, um, which is very connected to the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the one that directs our relaxation and 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 <clears throat> mood meaning that we go back into rejuvenate uh, the nervous system and the this nerve is it's like an upside down tree in the body that connects all the inner organs and first the voice because it is like when we're stressed or traumatized also the voice will change you know because and that's a sign of that the things are not in rhythm so right. dancing with your ner nerves you can hear it when people are saying things so also when you're actually um when you're singing, you're synchronizing your breathing and you're breathing in, you're holding your breath and you're breathing out longer. So in breath, sympathetic nervous system, stress activation, holding breath or breathing out, singing la 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 Long out breath means activating parasympathetic nervous system. People singing together, call and response, synchronized activation of parasympathetic nervous system, which also means that heart rate variability becomes more synchronized with the oxygen that comes in through the heart to the body. So there's so much neurobiology. It's not only fun, it's great for you. Yeah. And combining all this with tapping, like in this song that we just played, you know, it is like call and response. It is some kind of dancing. It is singing. It is doing tapping, you know. And when you combine those things, that's why we say combine it, you know, with whatever you do, you know. So it will always be more efficient because you connect to something else and you, you know, reach another level. And the smiling, of course. Yep. There you yes. go. There you go. Hmm. Right. Good. So yeah. So that's cool. So uh, I was just thinking of we we should go back to some of the of the havening since we did an introduction in the beginning. So we have an, uh, a repetition of the of the havening. What do you say, Ulf? You go. I think that sounds like a good idea. I mean, uh, you know, because havening is it's really it's good for us. So Havening, it was Dr. Ronald Rudin who studied tapping and studied studies made by, uh, one study by Harper, uh, looking at what happens when we stimulate um, points of the body to regulate how the brain works during stress or uh, remembering or triggering a traumatic memory or event. So the tapping will enhance something, one of the brain waves called the delta wave, and the delta wave will start a chemistry in the body that actually is part of the depotentiation, depossibilization of the receptors in the amygdalae. Apart from all that, because the science of this, you can read in the book by Peter Stapleton, you know, the science of tapping and accompany it, you know, with a dose, with a dessert of Bessel van der Kolk uh, and his wonderful book, The Body Keeps the Score, which actually ties in together with this. And if you want an extra helping to your coffee, with just something nice, a little praline, it's the waking the tiger by people in the So the science is all in there, plus Dr. Rudin's book, When the Past is Always Present. But havening itself is so simple. So you can just tell people if they're talking to you, you know, something happened and I'm so upset and I don't know, you just say, we can continue talking, but please, please put your hands together and let's just do something called self-havening with your palms. So just do this along with me now. I do a circular motion. All fingers and the palms should be connected. Now, what this will do is it will start a kind of tone inside your body. 
So it doesn't really happen immediately. It takes a few minutes for this tone to start. So you keep doing this. And if you put on a brain scanner, and there are actually, we're just experimenting with something called focus band, which is a brain scanner. You can measure this delta wave uh, and you can see how it actually enhances when you do this. Another way of enhancing the delta wave is doing it on your shoulders like this. Pulling down and you find the rhythm that's appropriate for you. It's never too fast or too slow, or you can be very, there's a, there's a wide range of fast enough and slow enough that you can find what's comfortable for you. And you can also try it on the face where we have more sensory acuity than we have on other parts of the body. So doing this for a while will actually enhance that delta wave and relax your body. The same delta wave that's there in deep sleep and you do it again with the palms of your hands. And I'm gonna to try to show you really short here, a little uh, metaphor for how I believe this works. It didn't, it sometimes works wonderfully, maybe it does now. So this is a tone bowl. And if you hit it, you get a tone, right? So what happens when you do havening is that you start this tone, I'm putting it next to the mic now. Yeah. And that's what you're doing. So by doing this movement, you're actually starting a tone in your body, which is the delta wave, which calms down everything. So now you can compare these two. And please don't ask uh, if we think one is better than the other, because they're not, <laughs> and they are. Uh, and when would you prefer one or the other? We have the exact answer. Gunilla, when would you prefer the one over the other? Yeah, and then we have the universal answer, it depends. That we can say it's the answer to everything. It depends on where you are. And then we can give you the example. We come go back to the island of, of Lesbos, to the refugee camp of Moria, where we work together with this medical uh, organization called Kitrinos Healthcare, who has volunteer medical doctors who are there also now during this corona time. But also seeing that there are so much stress among the refugees, and so we were um, teaching tapping and giving it to, to, to refugees, but many got into panic attacks there because the frustration and the level of, of trauma is so high in the camp. Uh, and then we saw that tapping when it comes to panic attacks is not a good idea because it becomes very intrusive starting, you know, but you need to do something because you cannot keep giving sedatives to all the, the, the clients who get into that. So we started to using Havening. And at that time before, pro, I want to say, um, pre-corona, we would do everything on the person, you know, we do tapping on the person because it is more efficient, but now you do it yourself. Um, so doing havening, you know, on the person or making, having the person doing it can be extremely, extremely calming and fantastic to you. So people get astounded that, you know, you can do something about these severe panic attacks, you know. Somebody who has come back to the clinic several times, you know, screaming and being, you know, taking all the time of so many doctors. And then you see that you can do something as simple as havening and like the tone that Earl showed, wing, when you start wing, it starts and the vagus nerve starts also vibrating, dancing. And finally, you know, it is the person will be able to find his back to his or her rhythm again. Magic. Magic. So it would be great to just have a little response from you in the chat where you can just write what you experienced, you know, what was the difference you experienced right now trying havening as uh, compared to tapping. Now remember, it's not one wins over the other. You know, today you might have preferred one or the other or they were the same and in five minutes from now, it could be different because it depends on your nervous system. It depends on what kind of issue is being triggered. So. These are two uh, paint brushes that you can use to paint your painting with people at any time. And just choose wildly between them and see which one actually makes the nicest impression at the moment. But please do write in the chat, what was your impression of havening? Yeah, yeah, that would be good. Soothing was immediate, says Shirley, which is fantastic. You know, it is like, and that's why we want you all to, you know, try these techniques and keep doing in them and then share them with others and get some experiences. Tapping a little more energizing, calming, havening, very calming. Yeah, so you see, it is like to say, it's not one or the other. 
they are both and they're both sending signals to the brain you know to say that whoa here we can go calm a bit more of the delta wave you know because something is happening because the activation of the touch healing touch you know there's a technique called healing touch this is touching using the body the biggest organ of the body the skin which has all these signals possible in through the nervous system Havening feels comforting. Yeah, it is comforting. This is how we do to comfort somebody, isn't it? You hold on or you hold on to yourself. Oh, help me. I don't know what to do. You know, you do this. And then put somebody has put it into a sequence, into a system. Yeah. And like, like Sydney is saying, TTD is a process. That's true. For some people, TTT is more of a treatment or feels like a treatment because it's a sequence that you're going through on specific points and you go to, through it twice, right? So you don't really have to keep track of time because doing the double sequence of TTT is five minutes, which is the amount of time necessary to create the effect of relaxation. Um, and also, uh, I would like to say that if you're doing phone calls, support calls, uh, large groups, or people who might be, um, who might, might feel a little bit alienated by doing something weird with their body, just putting the palms together and doing this, you can even get grown men um, to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that getting grown men to do anything is a hard thing you know but mm -hmm. this is possible yes mm -hmm. try it out with your yeah partner. somebody says i love the simplicity of havening but already come and started yeah so that is you know and havening feels like self-compassion which is good you know it is like yeah you take care of yourself it's somebody says it's, it seems easier to do yeah in some certain situations but sometimes it feels more uh, appropriate to show it a technique which is more not only for some it feels like nothing because one of the I could say drawbacks of both havening and tapping, but is that they look too simple to be able to do something. So for some, when you start showing, it will be like, hmm, what is this? How can this help? You know, I've been in this state of mind for so long time, but it is like, and then tapping can seem more like a treatment, but it all depends again, you know, and you have to explain it. You have to use it yourself and through your own experience, like Placid said, through his own healing, you can explain it to others saying, yeah, I was like this, I had this, or this stress level went down. Yeah, so Kimberly, you're asking, do we need more training? Do you need more training? No, you don't need anything. You're fully set to go out and offer this to somebody. Now remember, you're not saying, look, I learned something in 90 minutes that can heal the world and let me do this to you. That's not the way you're doing it. You're going up and you're saying, hey, I attended this funny webinar with some weird people in Sweden and they were doing this thing that calmed them down and it calmed me down. Now, if you want, I can show you and you can tell me if it works for you. So you're gonna help me evaluate this because I'm going through a certification here and we're having a second training in the 6th of July, which I hopefully signed up for so that I can be on it. And if I do that and we can try this with you, I might have some of my certification cases ready and it's only six cases, so please help me do this. If you present it in that way, you will find that your loved ones will be a lot more happy to help you evaluate it than if you say let me tap you i have found the greatest thing you know that's that's hard for some people to they're going to ask you what the science is and there is yeah of course building trust like susanna is as a very important yeah building trust is always i mean the person has to feel safe you know that is number one and that is trust of course um Kimberly says, couldn't find the link for the part two in July. Uh, it's out now. <laughs> and if perhaps you can put the link here also in the chat. The link is in the same place where you found the first one. But I'll, I'll put it in the chat. Don't worry. Sign up. Be there. If you miss it, you know, uh, we, we, if you can't that specific date, but you can because it's mm -hmm. Corona. Uh, but if you can, for some reason, you can join another second day. You will be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, we would also, I mean, the certification that we're talking about, you find it on our website, the Peaceful Heart Network, no, peacefulheart.se, and that we wrote before in the chat. So if you go there, peacefulheart.se, the certification, as I said, it's six cases that you use for TTT. You give the, I mean, and the, the, the certification um, process is online. So you write it in a, in a Google form. It's a form that you find on the website. And then you answer some questions about trauma that you all find. You will all get our book, Resolving Yesterday, that we, sorry, um, this one that we have written, um, Resolving Yesterday. You will get it as a PDF. You can also buy it on Amazon, of course, where everything is um, nowadays. So you will find the answers, and most of you probably know it already. 
So, and part, part two, um, cover it again. What does it mean? Will part two cover it again? Uh, I don't really get the question. Do you? You are smarter than me in this. Yes, kind of okay. English. So part two, cover all of this again. Yes, the evening. Absolutely, Jamie. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. okay. So, that's good. You can watch this recording too afterwards. You can watch it 10 times. Skip Netflix and just watch this over and over again. You'll have it. Yeah. So if you would, I mean, please now write some comment about this training today, because we try, of course, constantly to evaluate and, and move forward. And uh, uh, because it's like five minutes, four minutes left. So please write in the chat um, what you have some comments of today. We have, uh, we have friends here that are, are repeat uh, visitors, like Mats Kappa Karlsson, who knows tapping and havening, and, and other people here that have tried uh, both of them. So uh, feel free, you guys, to, to write in the chat any comment or thought you have. Um, feel free to email us. We usually answer in a day or two. Uh, mm -hmm. We will show you more techniques this time as well. We will repeat these techniques, and you, you, might, you will be also practicing to show it to somebody else. Both work very well over Zoom uh, and over the phone. Did you say hit to Netflix to see it again? No, yeah, Leslie. No, Leslie. <laughs> no, actually, what we said was skip Netflix and just watch the rerun of this webinar. <laughs> uh, and um, mm -hmm. it will be good. Yeah. Yeah, we get this webinar by email. Yes, we will. When we have, you know, um, converted it, we will send it to the everybody that signed up for this, this webinar. So thank you so much. And, you know, keep tapping and keep havening because you will see a lot of smiles on people's faces and that is fantastic you know it is and some people ask us you know oh you work specifically with trauma isn't that very heavy oh my goodness you know and we say no that's the best thing i've done in my life because so many smiles of people releasing these heavy burdens that they've been carrying for years and years sometimes you know it's fantastic so you know welcome into this Turikumwe, as you say ubuntu you know we are all here together you know and thanks, Sebastian, for the comment. Yeah, thank you so much. So does, does anybody, now if you want to, you know, if you want to mute yourself, you have a Q&A, you have a question, you have a comment, you have something you want to say, you know, you can just go wild and do it because we have two minutes of abundance where <laughs> anything can be talked about or shared right yeah. now. So just mm -hmm. feel free and do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much, all of you. So whatever comment you want to say, you are most, you are most welcome. Mm. Yeah, I could ask Anne actually to say something because she was in the training I did in, I don't, if you remember what year it was, please Anne. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> no, I don't remember the year. I was just thinking about it. I, I can't remember. But it yeah. was several years ago anyway. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. So much welcome. Yeah, <laughs> welcome back. Yeah, that's good. I realized I have changed it all. Yeah, yeah, but that's good. I mean, you're a professional already in your in your field. You know, it is like so fine. Thank you so much, Anne, for joining. You saying it depends. That, yeah, that was the osteopath. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Anne is osteopath, and uh, you know, I've been doing practice for a long time. Yeah, so we met in that festival of life, isn't it? Namaste. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, guys, uh, be brave. Go out, tap people, learn, watch the videos experiment, take risks, take care, don't touch anybody if they're sneezing, uh, do it at a distance, try it over Zoom, do it for yourself at least once a day the next couple of days, and experiment with it, play with it. What's the difference? What if I tap, you know, more, more fast? What if I tap slower? What will the difference be, you know? What happens if, if I look at somebody else doing it? What happens if I think about a relative and I do it to myself and maybe I don't even tell them or they call me up and say, I feel great. I don't know. Yeah. And go out and do it. I mean, do all these things. Go out in the sunshine. Raise your hands towards the, the sky if it's only on the balcony or whatever, the window, wherever you're allowed to, to move out, you know. And do it because it is like you'll find, you'll find definitely change. And as we say, some, the recommendation is do it morning and evening like you brush your teeth do some tapping morning evening see how you sleep if you know observe your sleeping observe the day how it turns out and if there is a difference start observing yourself more how do i feel if i do this when somebody your calls you and scolds you for something or you get the bill because you parked in the wrong place do it before you know get mad or you know and see if or when you get mad see if it helps to do it try it you know all over so 
Great. Listen really closely now, everybody. Listen. <laughs> Listen now. Yeah. That's the official ending of this webinar, but you have a bonus extra Q&A if you want to ask us any question right now. So we've passed the normal time and now it's time if anybody has an extra question. We don't want to rush you. The world is turning at its own speed. We're all yeah. going to be okay. So any questions? Mm -hmm. I'm curious how Gaffa found his way here. <laughs> Why? Well, because he's... <laughs> <laughs> how I found my way here. Yeah. yeah. I just saw it on the internet. So good. I, 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 I better join. Yeah, good. We are happy to yeah. see you, Kaffa. Yeah, you, you long can, time you friend a, and colleague. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can never have too much of it, so. Yeah, no. <laughs> we're we're happy, happy to yeah. see you. Yeah, I, good. Are the, are the people here in the Facebook group, some of them? Or? That's a good idea. They should all be in the Facebook group. So please, everybody, yeah. join. Yeah. join. Join the Facebook group. Perhaps you can put out. Do you yeah. have it there? Or yeah. can you, you know, so it will be can start the discussion. I don't even know. I'm not too good at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if, yeah. If, if, if someone wants to practice or something, so we can just stay in touch and practice yeah. with each other, just reach out to each other and do it. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Peaceful heart. Peaceful <laughs> heart network. But Gaffa is also a musician, so Peaceful Heart Network on Facebook. Find Mima, us there. Miri is asking, do you ever combine tapping and havening together? And the answer is never. Almost. We always. Always. We always. <laughs> <laughs> so almost we've, always. We've been teaching this to people working with addiction recovery in a program. Up to 300 people in Sweden have been trained working in homes with people with addiction challenges. And also, uh, we've taught it to people working with. Um, criminally challenged youth and, and kids who need to get out of a criminal lifestyle. And they've been using tapping as an exercise with the groups, but they also do um, self-havening with distraction, which we will show you next time, cliffhanger. Uh, and you will enjoy that. Yeah. Yeah, so it is like, so in addiction recovery, um, we work with our colleague Stefan Sandström, who is during his whole career has seen that trauma is a big driving force, of course, for self-medication with different drugs, whether it's sugar or, or cocaine or alcohol or sex or whatever it is that is the addiction. So when he found these techniques, havening and tapping, he said, wow, I can do wonders now. We can even you know, go to the root cause of the addiction instead of focusing just, oh, you have to quit your <coughs> addiction. So made, of course, a huge difference. So we have had a lot of people join these, these seminars because, and they feel like, wow, suddenly I can do something, you know, instead of just knowing that these are the challenges of the person. Yeah, and also I would recommend you uh, to look up a little more about havening because I think it's a wonderful technique and the science of havening. Um, there, there is a lot of free material on the internet from lately. There's been a lot of webinars going on and you can look into that scientific model of encoding and decoding trauma. Next time we will talk about that and you will get a simplified model and you will understand everything and you will get the wonderful distraction technique. Um, but that is next time. So can I, can, can I just, um, um, one thing, someone asked if uh, you combined tapping and havening and mm -hmm. actually we, we did at the beginning when Gunilla taught the, the TTT, she, she also put this technique in, which is some kind of havening. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we've we already do done it. <laughs> yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. So that is good. You know, we that's what we say. We keep learning from 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 people all these things that you can can do and, and combine it to reach people in one way or another. Some people prefer one thing, others prefer others. So the the havening Website is called havening.org, isn't it? Or com? I don't remember. Or org, isn't it? And if you're in Sweden, you can go to one called SE. So yeah. havening.org or havening.se. Mm -hmm. And you just find there's lots of materials. Um, on the havening.se, you have a great English video from Kemi, which explains the science uh, shortly and succinctly. So, um, and don't hesitate to be in touch. But simply yeah, but there was another question. Though. Does this work with tension felt in the body or just specific memory? Yes. You know, sometimes, I mean, you can ask everybody as a body therapist. I mean, it is like so much tension sits in the body. 
Uh, and you can just, if you feel I have this tension in my stomach, uh, focus on that and do tapping or havening. And, and often something comes up and you can even find out what it was because it sits, body has the memories that sometimes are released, even if we don't know, it's starting doing yoga and suddenly you start crying. You have no idea what is this, but the body remembers sometimes that we don't even remember ourselves. Mm. So that's very good. You focus on the pain and, and do the tapping. Yeah. Yep. Good. Thank you so right. much. Joel. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Yes. Take care, everybody. Take care. We love you. We'll send you emails. Send yeah. us emails. You can download and, it if you want. And then we say this, find calm and pass it on. Bye-bye.